Jim Collison, we are live at Infotech 2016. I'm here with the today's keynote speaker, <laughs> Tara Wheeler. And, and Tara, you're apparently a big deal. You've got a book, <laughs> you're a CEO. There's no shirt. <laughs> so, you know, all kinds of great stuff. Thanks for taking a few minutes to interview Thanks with so me much. today. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's just dive into who you Wonderful. are. If you give me kind of a little bit of background on the details you'd love to share with us. Absolutely. Uh, I am a big fan of furry cat videos on the internet. Uh, <laughs> I am the CEO of Fizment. I'm website securities are at Symantec. I'm the author of the Women in Tech book. Uh, I spend too much time on Twitter, I think, at this point. And, uh, I've, uh, I've gotten into Twitter lately, too. too. A little bit of that, yeah. <laughs> and I, I have an unfortunate soy latte habit a, at this addiction point. Addiction yeah. to, <laughs> to, uh, to coffee at this mm -hmm. point. All those things you would expect from a girl geek. Would, is it okay to call it? Would you <laughs> call consider me a girl yourself a girl geek? geek? Too. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's one way to put it, sure. Um, I think that, uh, that, that people who are inclusive and happy and want to provide this kind of opportunity for others to share messages, that, that we often need to be a little bit more forgiving, I think, of, of folks who... I, I, I got to say, I remember a story once when an older gentleman who had hired me to do a really great position said, um, he was on a, a call with me and he said, all right, well, now you gals just go on ahead and, and get done with it. Oh, I mean, girls, I mean, ladies, I mean, women, I mean, go. and I said, just don't call me late to dinner. It's fine. Yeah. He's a wonderful human being and, and working and we need to be a little more forgiving, I think, of people yeah. who are trying their hardest to be inclusive. And uh, I like to do that. Yeah. I like to reach out, you know. We're going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about that uh, sure. because... Um, we see a lot in our mm -hmm. hiring too. We see a lot sure. where we're trying to, you know, the, the, I think the national average in computer mm -hmm. science programs today in the United States is 7%. I think that's the latest, it's uh, ladies again, yeah. to men, uh, mm -hmm. ratio. Yeah. Um, we've had some great success in our internship programs at Gallup and we get that in the 25, 30% mm -hmm. range, but Wow, that's spectacular. We still that's got a, we have still have a long ways to go. We'll yeah. we'll come back to that. You have done a lot of things, and I, I understand you're kind of a Star Trek aficionado. Is that was was that the the roars of outrage I think from in what, there when I said something I about think, how clearly Star Trek was superior to Star Wars? Uh, so if someone was carrying a lightsaber around and wow. brand, I feel like there's a lightsaber brandishing statue. We those need to pull are pretty out brash words. words to say in a <laughs> tech keynote from that uh, standpoint. But you've done a lot of different tech things. If you look at your bio, what's been your favorite? I mean, I mean, of all the roles that you've done mm. to date, and it can even be what you're doing right now, but what's been your favorite? It's so hard to say. I think that that the thing that I love the most is I feel like careers in technology don't have to be linear. And as a result, I've gotten a chance to do all manner of things that I love without necessarily having to wait in line to do yeah. them, which is a great experience. Yeah. Well, you've so. done some. You've done some. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. some incredible project management, right? When we think about tech projects and some of those things. Well, just managing that book, I'll tell you. So I, I joke with those those ladies, project managing eight famous women in technology is, is yeah. quite the challenge. To how, get to. How'd you come to the point where you decided to write a book? What was that? Oh, how did that happen? A, that's a great question. So there I was in 2014 and I had given yet another talk on here's how to get a job as a woman in technology and here's what this is like. And uh, finally I just said, like three people came up to me and said, have you considered doing a book? And I was like, <laughs> finally, I got to do this. So if I just write the book, then everyone will ask me my advice and I'll just hand them the book and I'll never have to talk about yeah. it ever again. Instead, the only thing that happens is now I have to boil it down into four easy blog posts for just everybody. And I was like, all right, like, well. I, I wrote a whole book. Failed. Can you just read the book? Right, it's kind of like, like it's you should, right? yeah. maybe you should podcast the book so people can. Oh my gosh. Have you thought I, about doing that, or well, have you maybe you've done it? Uh, there's the audiobook is out on Audible, okay. so yeah, that, that that I think is what they call a podcast these days. <laughs> yeah, well, now the mm -hmm. the audiobook is word for sure. word. Have you mm -hmm. thought about breaking the book down into a podcast mm -hmm. series where you kind of go beyond, mm -hmm. you know, take chapters and maybe you do six podcasts? Mm -hmm on the chapters that are more informal. People love the- That is a really great like a idea. Oh, good, good. I'm gonna steal that from you. Oh, totally. I'll okay, give you my good. card when I'm done. We can oh, talk yeah. about this. If but you wanna interview me through all of them? I would, I I would, do I would actually do that okay, for good. you. So that'd be, I would, <laughs> it would be a ton of fun, especially mm -hmm. because this is a really important topic to oh, us. Yeah. Uh, women in tech. Mm -hmm. Are we making progress at this point? Is it getting better out there? Yeah. You know, I mentioned 7%. Yeah. Uh, we, want, we want that to be 50. Mm -hmm. We're working really, really hard to go 50-50. Um, we're doing all kinds of things. But in sure. your opinion, are we making progress nationally? Well, um, I, I, I'm going to challenge you on that. We want it to be 50. First, I, you know, okay. it's, it's tough to say because we've we've seen that the high point of women in technology was 1984 with 38% of women getting uh, degrees in computer science. Yeah. And I think it was a couple of years ago it dropped to 11. You're saying last year it went down to seven. Seven, again. I think, yeah. is what the, the last one I heard. The last one you heard, exactly. So clearly the problem's getting worse and not better. And yet it's not necessarily that we want to see gender equality in technology. Yeah. It's only that we want to see women not having to drop out and increasing numbers at each point in their career. 
career is yeah. based on challenges faced by family life, by the structure of technology companies. Yeah. Um, I like to often say the problem that technology has is not really a woman problem. It's a primary caregiver problem. Mm. And while women are still taking over the majority of the work at home in terms of kids and house and everything like that, uh, it's a real challenge to try to do this this kind of a career. Yeah. So, uh, and the interesting and the good news, the, the positive part about all this is that the millennial generation, those under 30, men are now expected and expecting crucially, to take over at least half of the house and child care yeah. work. So that's extraordinary to hear. And it also means managers now need to start thinking about the fact that it's going to be more men who are requesting family leave. Yep. So yeah. No, we see that. We're, yeah. we're starting to see that now. Right. And I, I think uh, becoming very important. We, mm -hmm. I deal with more of the mm -hmm. high school, college. We have a high know. school and college internship program sure. and giving equal opportunities. And so it's okay. one of the, we also see um, at that level, especially in high school, okay. one of the, one of the premises, I don't know in the book, if you deal with it, sure. All, but we see a lot of girls dropping out in junior high. Yes, and so we're losing the them, ones, right? Yeah. We lose them even before we get started. Right. We we're starting uh, to target that with a specific program at Gallup that will okay. bring these kids in and right. and hopefully change that. We find transportation, especially in the inner city or in the in the areas of low income, is is a problem. Okay. Do you guys see anything in in the work that you've done? We've mm -hmm. talked about family life. Now that's Absolutely. kind of post-college or even it in is. that age kind of standpoint. Mm -hmm. Do you see any other challenges in between maybe that eighth grade or those seventh oh, and eighth yeah. grade years in high school? Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about well, what, what do you see? You, you really put your finger on it right there. It's it's that there are multiple challenges and over time, it's just a higher attrition rate for women. We see them drop out at about yeah. twice the rate at men as men do at each major point in their journey towards technology in uh, in, in elementary school, in junior high school, in high in high school, when they go into college, when they graduate with a computer science degree, there's a big, big break point in women who graduate with computer science degrees yeah. who actually go into technical work. Many of them go into meta or paratechnical work like project management, mm -hmm. digital marketing. Yep. They have those skill sets, uh, but they're often not as welcomed into the engineering field. So that's that's a major break point there. We also see that that next major break point at about 35 when it's it's really a choice in that moment are you going to be focusing on your family yeah. or your career and that's it's really unfortunate to see a lack of support for that one of the major suggestions that i think we in the field have really been working on is when we see paid family leave paid parental leave in the united states become federal in nature i think we're going to see a big change at that point. yeah mm -hmm. yeah what about yeah. um when we think about high school as college sure you made a statement just a minute ago about the, the you mm -hmm. said engineering you used that sure, sure. word and then they're beginning to drop out anything from an enterprise perspective mm -hmm. as we think about how business because i think sure. my my premise is that the enterprise should own the right. internship world when we think okay. about both high school and college okay. it's our job to make sure that these students are ready to go and right. ready to be employed we have the work we know what they need to do yep. it's silly if we're going to expect our universities to do this for us mm -hmm. so what kind of advice would you give to me with that premise and mm -hmm. if, if we were going to change that at the high school and college level what mm -hmm. kind of advice would you give to me as an enterprise or maybe something mm -hmm. i could do different I'm gonna call out to something I was just talking about in my keynote over there, which was the fact that sometimes we need to see the change that's out there before we believe that we can actually accomplish it. And so you as an enterprise can absolutely demonstrate that by promoting, by hiring women leaders in your field and by showing the women who are showing up in high school and collegiate internship programs that you do hire and promote internally yeah. women tech, tech, technical leaders inside your company. Yeah. And I, I remember thinking, and I, I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, it was such a great moment seeing in the seventh season of Star Trek The Next Generation, <laughs> the first time that Deanna Troy gets to stop wearing the cutie shirts and puts on the real uniform for the first yeah. time, goes through the training to become a bridge officer and sits her first watch and just sitting down in that captain's chair for the first time. I mean, I remember looking at that and going, yeah. Maybe I could try that too. Yeah. And I think a lot of women really have that moment when they see women achieving that, they just think to themselves, that's an option I don't think I realize existed for me. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's mm -hmm. a good point. Show I think, yeah, I kind of prove it is what yeah. you're saying. Uh, Gallup, mm -hmm. both of our, our, both our VPs of software and MIS are, are women. Well, you're back. So there's a great, there there's go. a great opportunity uh, there. We are also finding uh, with the ladies that we bring in mm -hmm. at the high school level, it, many of them come in not thinking computer science right. is a option and they leave yeah. amazingly thinking computer science is an option. Uh, we're having we're having some great success. I remember our very first year of the high school program, sure. we had a gal, we asked him, what do you think you'll do? And she said, I biology or something like that. Sure. And uh, she ended up going in computer science and then Google stole her away from me and she's doing some software development. They do that so, every once in a while. Uh, Google, <laughs> Google. Um, so from a book perspective sure. then, what, 
how, how, does this changed anything for you? I mean, is writing the book, publishing mm -hmm. it, being a published author, I assume it's available on Amazon and oh, all yeah. the great places Audible, you can Amazon. you can buy yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Has this changed anything for you? Has it opened any new doors? Has it created credibility and or got you speaking in areas you couldn't speak before? I, I already was speaking in these areas. I'm going to say that that mostly what I see people telling me is that it's helped to do the same thing that that moment in season seven of Next Gen did for mm. me, which is just open their eyes to the fact that people have different stories. This isn't just me writing this. This is autobiographical chapters interspersed with advice. Mm. So there's seven other women who also write an autobiographical essay. They tell about what it's like to be them. Yeah. And the essays that have a big impact on people are the ones they can most closely relate to. Notably, really importantly, only two out of the eight women who write in this book have computer science degrees. So the important thing to remember is that technology is available through a lot of doors. There's a yeah. lot of doors into and out of this career, yeah. and it doesn't have to be linear. So I had that reinforced in my own mind and my ability to teach that, I think. And so many women reach out and, and they say, it was amazing reading Katie's essay and finding out mm. what it's like to have a baby while doing a tech contract. Or it's inspiring reading Brianna's essay and understanding what it's like to be attacked by Gamergate and still come through with a great and award-winning game that she designed and put out there under the world. Yeah. It's wonderful to read that, to, to hear about these stories that women are telling about what it's like to be in technology. And all of a sudden, they're having those eye-opening moments of, hey, my life hasn't followed a traditional path, and I don't have a scholarship to Stanford or MIT, right. but I could do this. Yeah, That's the greatest moment. That's so good, because yeah. I think uh, I think there's so much pressure in the Silicon Valley yeah. to have a you know, to go to Berkeley or to go to Stanford mm -hmm. or to go to USC, and Absolutely. you have to have this certain um, pedigree set up to be able to do it. And, I think so. And yet, we hire computer science, or we hire... Sure software developers who come out of math programs. Absolutely. I've hired them out of English programs before. Oh, yeah. They they find technology late in their yes, college career, right? And they think, mm -hmm. hey, this could be really awesome. And, and I think we need to start thinking as an enterprise outside the box that, mm -hmm. hey, um, I don't have to be a darling of the Silicon Valley. I don't have to come out of Austin or Boston. Nope. I can, this is something I can do in Des Moines or in Omaha, Nebraska. Absolutely. And and uh, Omaha has a great startup community here that's doing pretty well and thriving. I heard about it. I'm surprised you got a chance to meet so many great people. No, it's, yeah. it's Omaha is, I think, the best kept secret in the United States when we think about cost of living, oh, availability yeah. to tech. <laughs> Yeah. And availability of just great people. I just mm -hmm. think Omaha uh, creates mm -hmm. great people here. So we have a great opportunity um, in that as well. Let's um, shift gears a little bit. Sure, uh, sure. Talk a little bit about security because I know that's a big Absolutely. deal for you, passion. right? Real passion for you. Mm -hmm. um, I, as a as a tech guy and mm -hmm. as a blogger and podcaster, I'm really worried about where we're headed mm -hmm. um, as an industry around security. Sure. Can you calm those fears or is it really as bad as we think? When we think about mm -hmm. information security, these people getting their sites hacked, information, email mm -hmm. servers, right? All this crazy yes. stuff that's going on right now. How do you approach this? Am I, mm -hmm. should I be worried or is everything okay? Well, I think that everyone has a responsibility to, to try to make the best decision they possibly can. And that's with the information that they have. There's a responsibility that companies have to make sure that people know what is and isn't being done with their data, where it's going, who it's being sold to, because it's often not the company that you gave your data to that ends up getting hacked. It's the third party you didn't know about and didn't pay attention to in the TOS. Now on a general kind of holistic nature, the, the information security is an extraordinary part of technology. It's it's the most exciting part of it to me personally. I think that it's the, it's the place that you find the crazy people and the dreamers right now trying to break things and figure out how they work. And one of the, the things I think I find most of all in, in InfoSec is people with a deep passion for protecting other people for trying to figure out how the system works and making sure that the little guy isn't getting hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, those are the white hat hackers. There are absolutely people out there that are bad and will steal your information. I like to think that um, there's this great quote from Sherlock uh, season two, the BBC one where Benedict Cumberbatch is facing down James Moriarty. And he says, I may be on the side of the angels, but don't ever mistake me for being one of them. Mm. I think that's, that's kind of a commonality yeah. among a lot of people. And they, they have these, these great minds that are focused on making sure that people are safe. And sometimes they come about it through a, a little bit of an awkward angle on occasion. Yeah. I think that the entire industry is the greatest thing I've ever discovered. I love being part of it. And I think that the 
the public image of white hat hackers needs a little bit of a rehabilitation mm -hmm. given the passion that most of the people I know and the intelligence that most of the people I know bring to protecting people that don't have their yeah. skill set. Yeah, yeah, we need some we need some good guys. Yeah, we do. There's a you lot know? of them out there. Our tax surfaces continue to get larger yes, as we do. think about what's on our phone. A little bit. What kind of when you're talking to the average guy sure. or gal, what kind of advice do you give them to kind of reduce that? Because we'll mm. never get a zero, we'll never get no, a, a zero footprint, right? right? There'll always be some kind of attack sure. surface. What, what kind of advice do you give them? Well, there's the crazy option. You can air gap all of your computers. You can turn <laughs> off all your devices and kill everything. Right. The truth is, right. is that's yeah. not realistic, right? We yeah. interact with other people. And just as when you're interacting with other people in relationships, opening yourself up means you have a chance to get hurt, but that's when you get the value out of being part of a human community. Right. You know, opening yourself up to the information community means that you have that increased attack surface. You can be hurt. Uh, the number one thing I actually tell people who are super non-technical to do is just set a passcode on your phone. And I don't care if it's mm. one, 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 one. Right, that is still an order of magnitude beyond the security that you previously had, mm -hmm. and that helps so much. Especially, you know, if it's if it's grandma, if it's somebody, you know, it's, it, grandma and grandpa call you up and say, "Hey, kiddo, how do I secure my phone? I'm scared of all these hackers." Set a passcode yeah. is really what it is, and make sure that. And the next step beyond that, of course, is use a password manager. Don't use the same password on every site. Yeah, those are the two biggest things that can stop you from most major hacks that aren't directed at you. Yeah, Absolutely. I think I think be smart. Uh, yeah, about what smart. you're doing, careful how you're yeah. connecting to sure. to uh, Wi-Fi networks in yeah. various areas, right? I mean, there's sure. some there's some things you can do, some mm -hmm. security you can do that, that's getting better. Do you see it getting better, or do you see it getting worse in in these realms? Well, I think that there's a lot more popular media out now that is kind of demystifying the nature of information security as a community and what normal human beings can do to protect themselves. Um, I, I happen to love the show, Mr. Robot, and I I had a, a lot of people yeah, like that show. It's, it's yeah. a pretty good show. It's a good show. Um, I was involved with something that they did in, in Tribeca. It was a lot of fun. And um, I think that it's a great way to look at how the the mind of people that are part of this community think, while at the same time being super sensationalized. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I think that normal human beings who see this community are often... Um, are often taken aback or even put off by kind of the, the craziness and the dress and the mohawks and the piercings <laughs> and, and they and um, and they should absolutely recognize that there are good guys out there and we are doing the best that we possibly can to build a safer world using the best tools we have now that yeah. we're inventing more every day. Yeah, I get an opportunity. I record a podcast called Cyber Frontiers and Killer. I have some uh, students that work at the University of Maryland in, right. in the DC area. We talk about this cyber mm -hmm. security, cyber good defense all the time. There, yeah. yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the good guys. Yes, and they are. So even in college, we are starting to see good. hopefully more and more of these these mm -hmm. good guys coming forward. What's, um, what's the future of Tarot look like? What, what, where do you hope to be next? Three to five years. What's on the horizon for you? What, like, you well, are, wait, are we interviewing me for a job? <laughs> uh, hmm. Sure. Hey, if that's if that's an option, let's do that. <laughs> Jamie, you want to get over here? <laughs> all, all I really want right now is like my my latte and my cat. And, and yes. Um, and cat cat or cat videos. Cat and either, cat videos. Either one I work. Think, okay. Exactly. All right. <laughs> so I think uh, what I'm going to be trying to do is just continue to push information out there to the best of my ability. It's uh, when we are at this point in our careers, I think one thing that really goes lacking in almost every field in technology is an understanding of how to get an engineer to manage other engineers. I see a deficit of leadership training in the industry. That includes information security. Okay. Absolutely. How do you go from being yeah. someone who can do penetration testing to someone who manages penetration testers? Yeah. How do you manage a crew of people who are putting a website together if you yourself have never yeah. been a developer. And yet at the same time, if you were a developer, who trains you to be a manager? Yeah. So that's that's a question I'm really interested yeah. in right now. No, that's a great yeah. question. It's not one I expected and not one I'm hearing very often mm -hmm. uh, in, in the sense of, uh, you know, we have a information security problem yes. and uh, we've got a lot of great people on the ground, mm -hmm. but the future is really in the leadership of that and strong, so. strong leaders and strong management yes. and strong interesting. vision about what can and can't solve problems. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, very good. Uh, Women in Absolutely. Tech is your book. Is there going to be a follow up to this? Are you going to tell some stories? I mean, uh, certainly yeah. mm -hmm. there's new stories. Uh, when oh, did you gosh. when did you publish this? How long uh, ago? This was, I think, six, no, five months ago. I okay. Think was the launch so, so date of it. It's fairly and, new yeah. out well, there. And now what actually happened was uh, I had several of these women lined up in advance. Then we ran the Kickstarter, which yeah. is the, apparently it was the largest. Oh, it's Kickstarter book? Uh, yeah, it was nice. the large, I, uh, we said a record for anthologies, I think. Yeah. Uh, it was quite extraordinary. And um, 
over the course of that Kickstarter, there were hundreds of women who actually emailed me asking, do you want me to be part of this book? And we so we finally actually turned it into a medium channel called Stories from Women in Tech. So anyone who would love to tell your story, who wants to, to get that pushed out there, just tell a story about how you got into technology, what you love and what you don't love. And uh, yeah, if you'd love to, just reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at, at Tara, uh, T-A-R-A-H. It's my first name. You got yeah. at Tara? Absolutely. On Twitter? How long, how long have you been on Twitter? A while. Since the beginning? A little bit. Pretty close? A little bit. To yeah. it? Well, that's that's very cool. Who's the, <laughs> who's the book for? Who'd you write this book? At the end of the day, mm -hmm. who's your target audience and, and who should who should pick mm -hmm. this up? I mean, what, sure. do I give this to my high school girls? Yeah, do I, do. Uh, who, who gets it? Um, this, this is really aimed at the high school through uh, the director level for women in technology. Okay. While it's applicable to everyone, and I've heard girls as young as eight emailing me and I get to tell you right now um, the it's the dads emailing me and telling me I gave <laughs> this book to my daughter and she's she's trying to, to program on the computer and I'll just I'll be sobbing over my yeah. keyboard when I read those yeah. uh, but this is really aimed especially at those women who aren't sure whether or not they want to get into technology and the women who aren't sure if they want to get out of technology it's probably the best way to put it okay no I, I would think as I mm -hmm. think about the the uh, the ladies who joined me in high school, this sure. would probably be a, a, a nice primer mm -hmm. for for them, something to consider as they start uh, as they start working through yeah. it. We'll look for um, will, will the next one be called Women in Tech 2.0? Two, 2. <laughs> That's such a bad thing to say. Well, right? it's funny. But, Angie Chang actually uh, was the founder of Women 2.0, the organization, and she wrote uh, the the Crusader chapter in here, which is really awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think I can I think I can safely say that there's something else coming out sometime Good. soon. Good. So exciting. Absolutely. Well, we'll we'll be excited to follow this mm -hmm. a little bit. Thanks for coming to right. Omaha and being a part of. Real uh, if if they if nobody has thanked you yet, I'm sure you've gotten a lot, but. Uh, and again, some great comments coming out of the keynote. A good reason to be here at Heartland Developer Conference um, every single year. Tara, thank you for being a part of the interview. I appreciate it. Stay around for just a second.